Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Bob Zimmer. I'm president of the University of Chicago. Uh, I'm deeply honored to share the podium uh, today with several distinguished leaders. Uh, beginning our program today will be the United States Secretary of Energy, Stephen Chu, uh, whom I will introduce more fully in a moment. Uh, he will be followed by Argonne National Laboratory Director, Eric Isaacs. Uh, the University of Chicago has managed Argonne National Laboratory uh, for the United States government uh, now through the Department of Energy since its founding in 1946. Uh, Argonne, of course, plays a very fundamental role in the research enterprise of the University of Chicago and is a very important component of the uh, research enterprise in the city, state, uh, region, and the nation. Uh, our next speaker will be Illinois Governor Pat Quinn, uh, who is an early and strong advocate on behalf of this project, including making significant financial com uh, commitments as part of his ongoing efforts to bring clean energy jobs uh, here to Illinois. Uh, we will close with remarks uh, from Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel. Uh, Mayor Emanuel has been an extraordinary in his leadership on behalf of Argonne in this energy project. Uh, as a strong advocate, uh, hosting a tour of Argonne uh, and an energy roundtable for the Secretary of Energy. Uh, from his very first day in office, he's recognized the value of the university and Argonne in contributing to economic growth and jobs. Uh, this project, uh, Argonne and the university have benefited from the support of many other leaders. Senator Richard Durbin has been a tireless champion in Washington on behalf of our national labs and the vital scientific and energy research they conduct. He was unable to participate today uh, because of a vote in the Senate. Uh, but we are pleased uh, that Greg Bales from Senator Durbin's office is, uh, is here. I also want to acknowledge uh, uh, some others who could not be here with us today, Senator Mark Kirk, uh, Representative Judy Biggert, and Representative Dan Lipinski. And I also want to thank a uh, number of state and local officials who have joined us here today. I think we all realize that at every uh, level of society we face increasingly complex challenges. Uh, these are challenges to our economy, ultimately to the quality of life, and certainly to our position in, uh, in a global future. Uh, we also have an enormous opportunity, an, an opportunity to address these challenges uh, today and to create uh, new potential vehicles for addressing them in the long run. Uh, all of this requires a climate of innovation in which new ideas are developed, translated into practical applications, and made available. Uh, the University of Chicago is known for producing world-changing ideas. Uh, the energy partnership being announced today is one of the many ways that we are working to ensure that these ideas are pushed out into the world so that they can have a powerful impact. Secretary of Energy Chu has had and has been putting in place an important vision for how to tackle a key societal problem, namely our ability to produce, store, transmit, and use energy more efficiently. Today's announcement reflects a distinctive approach to doing science that brings together outstanding talent from across the country to solve a specific problem in order to produce rapid, measurable, and implementable results. I'm very pleased to introduce the United States Secretary of Energy, Stephen Chu. Okay. Thank you, President Zimmer, and again, I will repeat uh, uh, to all the VIPs here today, uh, Governor Quinn, uh, Senator Durbin's not here, who, who's been a major um, impetus for this, uh, and uh, Mayor um, Emanuel. Um, Rom, uh, as you may know, has boundless energy, um, and so it's only fitting that uh, a battery hub <laughs> uh, <laughs> will be announced today, uh, uh, and one wonders when his batteries ever run out. <laughs> um, in any case, uh, let me let me tell you a little bit about what this is all about. Uh, I have talking points, but my people know I never read my talking points, uh, but they give them to me anyway, hoping someday I might. Um, 
first, let me tell you the substance of this announcement. It's, uh, it's to announce that a team led by Argonne National Laboratory has been selected to head a five-year, $120 million research center. Uh, and if they do a good job, it could be renewable for another five years. What is the research center about? The model of this started w six, eight years ago uh, when I was a lab director, and I began to look at how, as a lab director, how could you organize research in a way that can actually change the rate at which something is done, the rate, how do you get it out of a laboratory, and how do you get it into innovation? And innovation means you get it out there into the private sector. Or in the cake, my models, you had to deliver the goods during wartime. And the uh, models I was thinking of, and I was sadly or happily, depending on your point of view, I guess for me now, sadly, old enough to know some of the people who worked at Los Alamos, and uh, personally, and know some of the people who worked at uh, places like the metallurgical lab called the Meth Lab at near University of Chicago. Um, and also the radiation laboratory, now called the radiation laboratory at MIT, developing radar. And what I got from these veterans was that when you had to deliver the goods very, very quickly, you needed to put the best scientists next to the best engineers across disciplines to get very focused on coming and solving a problem. And I heard stories of that type of interaction where some of the most brilliant physicists were actually bending metal, going and finding out how to engineer something so it would last. Uh, in particular, a physicist was Ed Purcell, the inventor of nuclear magnetic resonance that led to magnetic resonance imaging, discovered hydrogen in the galaxies. He was also, he went down and, and visited Bell Labs, not the Bell Labs that did research, the Bell Labs that made stuff because he also wanted to know, was, and he told me when you guys made stuff, it lasted, and we want to know how to do this. They're now not realizing what every cabinet meeting was like. <laughs> Ram is getting impatient. <laughs> <laughs> the drums are banging, he's spinning around. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we know each other from a, a while back. <laughs> but anyway, he's right. I should uh, uh, end by just saying that <laughs> that, um, uh, that this uh, is something I want to stress. This award was made on the technical merits. It was a truly outstanding, and only the technical merits. Sorry, Ron. <laughs> uh, but it was made on the technical merits. It was an outstanding application. And I've told uh, Eric uh, and others that, okay, and George, uh, okay, the ball's in your court. Don't let us down. You know, you just got to do what Oppenheimer and Fermi and <laughs> Seaborg and, <laughs> okay, no pressure. <laughs> and, uh, you know, now, starting now. <laughs> but in any case, uh, congratulations on, on that. It, 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 it speaks well of, of, of all the things that you've done. But also, remember, it's the beginning, not the end. And now the hard work begins. Very, very important for American industrial competitiveness. Very, very important that research be intimately linked with uh, manufacturing in a way that will actually propel the United States forward. And this is what the whole help co concept is about. So with that, um, I'm at the end, and Eric, the floor is yours. So thank you, sir. I think with that, uh, I see a lot of the faces actually from participants in the hub. I'm going to ask all of you to step to the back and get to work right away. <laughs> So I'm really delighted to, 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 um, uh, to welcome all of you here today for this announcement. Uh, as you know, this is the announcement of the award of the Batteries and Energy Storage Hub to the Joint Center for Storage Research, which we call Jay Caesar. So in my comments, I will call it Jay Caesar. Uh, and I really want to thank, on behalf of the hub, all the hub partners and Argonne, I'd like to thank President Zimmer, 
uh, for his commitment. Uh, Secretary Chu, of course, for his vision. It was his vision, really, that brought these things to fruition. Uh, I'd like to thank Governor Quinn and uh, the mayor for all that he's done and will, will continue to do for, for this hub. Uh, so it's really important that we acknowledge this. I also want to thank those that couldn't be here. Uh, Senator Durbin, as you've already heard, Congresswoman Biggert, who's been a long stalwart supporter of the laboratory, uh, couldn't be here today. Uh, we're delighted to thank her and wish her the best. And we're also looking forward to uh, working with our two new congressmen, Lipinski and Foster, both coming to Argonne, and also Senator Cook Kirk. Um, now, I, I mentioned the team. A lot of you are here in the audience, but there are few, and, and a lot of people put a lot of work into this thing. There are few I really feel I have to thank. Uh, first is Director uh, George Crabtree, who's sitting here in the front, uh, who's already been teased once or twice. Uh, dep his deputy, Jeff Chamberlain, and my deputy, Mark Peters, for their extraordinary efforts for this. And there's one other person who's standing over there, Don Levy, who's uh, been forcing us to do everything right suddenly. So, so we're really appreciative of all your work. Uh, so I just make a few comments about what the hub really is um, to, to elaborate on what the Secretary has already said. This is really the latest of four of these energy innovation hubs envisioned by the Secretary as a means to dramatically accelerate and de uh, development and deployment of important new technologies. In particular, Jay Caesar's mission is to combine science, entrepreneurship, and uh, education. We're taking on very large-scale, well-coordinated, mission-driven programs here that will lead to breakthroughs in energy science, and also, at the same time, train and inspire the next generation of scientists and engineers, and this is really critical. And just as significantly, Jay Caesar will work to lead to substantial new economic opportunities for Chicago and the state of Illinois, but also the entire nation, and that's why the partnership is so nationally spread. With the creation of this hub, uh, we embark on a historic, focused effort to transform our nation's energy landscape in both transportation and the power grid. This hub award gives us resources necessary to speed innovation only in advanced, advanced battery research, uh, but it's through this hub that we will develop entirely new ways to store energy, and that's important, beyond lithium ion. Uh, we will invent at the molecular scale new complex materials with storage capacities far behind, behind beyond anything we have today, and with those materials, we will design transformational prototype uh, battery systems that ultimately can be engineered for manufacturing. So it's very critical, we've already heard from the Secretary, we're going from the laboratory, cr complex new materials, all the way to manufacturing. So one of the things that's going to make this possible is the dream team we put together for Jay Caesar. Uh, this is really a public-private partnership, and the partner, I just want to list the partners in this partnership. It's an important thing to say who's in it because it's really what makes this thing so great. There's, of course, Argonne. There's Lawrence Berkeley Lab, Pacific Northwest Sandia, and SLAC at Stanford. Those are the five national labs. We have deep commitments and involvement from the universities, uh, predominantly regional, but it's University of Chicago, Northwestern University, University of Illinois Chicago, University of Illinois in Champaign, and uh, the University of Michigan. And I should mention that one of the important features of this, and you've heard it already, is not just having academics and, and lab scientists work together, but we have a strong involvement from, from industry. And, and our key industrial partners are Johnson Controls, and we have representation from Marianne Wright today, uh, from Dow Chemical, Applied Materials, and for an entrepreneurial outreach, we have Clean Energy Trust, which is right here in Chicago. And I want to highlight those industry partners will keep us on the straight and narrow to really take us from those complex materials all the way to something which is manufacturable. But I also want to say, reemphasize what the Secretary said, it's not just the great team who we've assembled. We've also had a, we have a great uh, management plan, a great implementation plan. We're organized uh, under a new operating model where discoverers, scientists like myself, discoverers, designers, prototypers, and manufacturers will be working in direct contact with entrepreneurs from the very beginning. That's very important. Uh, this replaces a traditional model, uh, which is going from isolated research, development, demonstration, and then deployment in separate institutions, bringing it all under one roof. It really aims to compress the time spans from the scientific discovery at the bench top all the way to commercialization. So really with this hub, we're, we're anticipating big stuff, big things. The hub began with great science and will continue with great science with George Crabtree's leadership and our world-class team of partners. You know, we will really keep the United States at the leading edge of the worldwide race to develop practical and reliable battery technologies. So something I'm going to say will put my partners on alert. We have a very ambitious goal, which is 555. And I'm going to state this publicly so we know we have to get there. The Secretary will be happy. We're going to develop batteries that are five times more powerful, five times cheaper within five years. That's a very aggressive, very ambitious uh, goal. 
but it's what the secretary just said we have to do. A factor of two is great. It can be engineered, and we're going to work on that. That'll be the milestones along the way. But really, factors of five are what we need to transform both the power grid and transportation. So we're working on that. And ultimately, I believe that today's announcement will mark a paradigm shift, a paradigm shift in our approach to energy storage technology, and perhaps even more broadly, for a green energy technologies as a whole. And the paradigm shift can be described as this, and I'll conclude with this, this thoughts, from an either-or paradigm to a yes-and paradigm from either we protect our environment or we expand our economy to a paradigm in which, yes, we can create new technologies that reduce greenhouse gas emissions and create jobs here in the United States. From either we can have plentiful, affordable energy or we can switch to more expensive, less reliable, renewable sources. Two, yes, we can create grid-level storage technologies that will make wind and solar practical and cost competitive. And from either we build an energy efficient cars or we build affordable cars to yes, we can design innovative, practical new electric cars that are lower in price and cheaper to power. So five years from now, I believe that we will look back with pride on what we have done, on pride on what we have achieved and, the ad achieved and the ideas that we have brought to fruition. And it is my hope that we will say yes, we have made great progress and going forward, we can do even more. Thank you. Okay. Well, this is quite a day for Illinois. Uh, this morning we opened the eighth wonder of the world, Lower Wacker Drive. <laughs> and today we're uh, announcing that uh, Illinois is going to be the battery capital of the United States of America. When it comes to technology and batteries, we want to be number one. And I grew up uh, not too far from Argonne National Lab. Uh, some of my friends' fathers worked there in the late 50s and 60s. And uh, we've got great scientific talent in our state and our great educational institutions like University of Chicago and Northwestern and UIC, as well as UIUC. I was recently down in uh, Champaign-Urbana and I met Nick Holyoke, uh, who's 86 years young. He invented LED technology for lighting. He's still in the lab at U of I. And we invented things like the web browser and ultrasound and uh, the cell phone technology. Illinois is an inventive, innovative place. And we want to thank the secretary for recognizing that. This is a really a grant over five years of over $100 million, about $120 million. And our state early on recognized how important this is to our jobs, to our economic future. So we committed uh, $35 million to build a building on the Argonne campus that really is going to be the place where George and many other scientists uh, work together in collaborative teamwork. Uh, it's so good to have, I think, everybody working as a team. I was with the mayor this morning at Lower Wacker. Here we are uh, today and every day. If we all work together, uh, it's amazing what human beings can accomplish, and that's what we want to do here in our state. This particular industry, this battery technology industry is a $42 billion worldwide industry. And it's growing at about 8% a year. And we want to get part of that. We want to be really intimately part of it, the center of it, so that we can spin off the jobs that the people of our state need to have a good middle class standard of living in the 21st century. So making investments from the people of Illinois and something as important as this will pay great, great dividends in jobs, economic growth, and livelihoods for our people. We want to keep our scientists and our innovators and our inventors right here in the land of Lincoln. And Abraham Lincoln was a great believer in technology. He didn't have a cell phone. Uh, I'm sure he would, uh, if he was here today, uh, be very involved with the technology of today. But in his day, the telegraph was a new invention. And he was constantly amazed by what it could do. And I think that spirit of inquisitiveness and innovation and inventiveness is really the heart and soul of what we're doing today. I want to thank everybody who's part of the team. I want to especially thank Eric Isaacs. He's on our Innovation Council. And from day one, when we put our council together, this is what Eric talked about, that we had to work together as a team to get this grant. And I think it'll make the people of Illinois ever stronger. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Uh, I want to emphasize, while I was teasing uh, Secretary Chu, 
which I will say this, and I was joking with him, but, uh, and this is on a separate subject, I do want to note that while you all witnessed what he could do in a cabinet meeting and his knowledge of technology, it's often forgotten what how important he was when the BP well exploded, having a Nobel Prize winning scientist in the room to help the president and force the industry to do things that they could not do, that it could not have been possible without Stephen Chu. That does not mean periodically he can't get enamored with technology and science uh, <laughs> and get lost in that, uh, which some of us as former chiefs of staffs would prod along. But that said, uh, all of us witnessed with awe what one sci Nobel scientist could do to change and help a country with its worst environmental <laughs> crisis and actually prod industry to do things that they didn't think was possible. So we owe you a great deal of gratitude beyond this grant today. Uh, uh, about a year ago, uh, President Zimmer came uh, and just wanted to discuss about the competition to go and make sure that the city of Chicago, the state of Illinois, Argonne University of Chicago was the center of this battery research, the most promising research. Now, first of all, Japan and South Korea are accelerating their resources into this, and this is a major competition worldwide, as the governor noted. There were other labs around the country who were competing for this grant, which is why I'm so proud that we here in the city of Chicago, the state of Illinois, are going to be the center of a promising field, both on the auto side, the electric grid storage, which will be unlocked, alternative energy, because as it produces where you're going to store that energy has been the riddle that needs to be solved. And this will make Chicago and the state of Illinois the epicenter in the United States to not only compete but to leapfrog past Japan and South Korea and all the promise of manufacturing jobs that are established whether that's applying materials in Johnson Control, the auto industry, but all the promise of future and startup companies like Smith Electric, as you saw, that just moved to, uh, decided to open up a facility here in the city of Chicago to produce electric vehicles. So from new companies to the old established who want to modernize and advance and leapfrog their competitors around the world, having research like this centered in a major urban area and in, the, uh, major, in a major state and allowing us to bring industry to be on the front end, not on the back end, is how we make sure that we not only compete against but leapfrog ahead of the competition to the next generation of technology. And our ability to do that with a great research operation with the University of Chicago, Northwestern, U of I, to bring the industry in as partners on the front end, not on the back end, is ensuring that this type of grant with the ability to recruit the companies the R&D facilities and all the other aspects of economic growth that happen and come to a city. And you cannot think of what we refer to in shorthand as Silicon Valley without what the research they produced at Stanford and Berkeley. That's what we're producing for the most promising field that is going to grow guaranteed at a minimum of 8% a year for the next 20 to 30 years, which is the battery technology and storage in Chicago will be the center of that research and all the promise of jobs and economic opportunities that come from that. And so while the governor joked, yes, about whack or dry, but it goes to the fundamentals. If you invest in the quality of your educated workforce, you bring the type of basic research to the city, you make investments in your infrastructure, whether that's at an airport, mass transit, your roads, or your broadband, and you make all those type of investments to bring that together, you will actually lead the country in job creation, which is why the city of Chicago has led every major city in the last year in job growth and job creation, because you're doing the fundamentals right so that the private sector can actually recruit and create jobs here. Ed? Uh, Mr. Mayor, no, no, Richard, Richard J. Daly once foresaw that uh, air transportation would be the future for the economy in Chicago. So you annexed Chicago part of the city of Chicago. Uh, what is the future of Chicago? Is it Without annexing it, is that are you taking that off? Uh, I didn't know you were. I, I didn't realize you were saying that. Uh, well, there's a couple things. First of all, uh, number one, don't give him flatter him with that. Uh, uh, number one, Ed, is as you already saw, Smith Electric came to the city of Chicago. They're going to open up their facility here. That's number one. It's already a company with manufacturing jobs in electric vehicles. Number two. I think that this, and, I, and everybody else can come up here if they want to speak, but you have other companies in and around here. You have basic research for the auto industry. 
Now that this is here, they may consider having satellite research and development come and set up and be operable here. I don't want to mean just to because we have great universities, but I will want to say one thing well, for the University of Chicago. Because of their entrepreneurial department in the Booth Business School, they have done a fun, fabulous job of being able to see how people can take ideas of basic research and turn it into entrepreneurial startup companies, which is one of the reasons the city of Chicago went from 15th to 10th worldwide in the cities for startups. No other city has moved that dramatically in a single year and that far in a single year. And it's the ability to say, here's an idea and here's a company with an IPO promise. And that is how you make it. So whether it's in Argonne, I, I, based on what I see today, where companies are now moving into the city of Chicago for the advantages of both the high-skilled workforce, high-trained workforce, the density that comes there, that Chicago will be a winner in that. And if, let, and if we don't succeed in that, there's always the option you, prefer, you sh first described. Well, next one. <laughs> <laughs> This is, is Secretary Chu. If you can't handle this, nobody can. So, do you got Eric? Do you guys got, you want to get both go? Well, why don't we both take a stab okay. at it? Yeah. Okay. So, so one of the things is yes, they're spread out, but um, it was very important from the get go in, in all our hubs that ideally you want everybody to be under one roof. But there are ways of getting people under one roof with you know teleconferencing, all those things. The the thing here is that for this particular hub. Uh, this team saw expertise nationwide. They actually, uh, not mentioned, but some of the great battery pioneers uh, of the East Coast, uh, MIT, Harvard, uh, is, I think MIT is, is well represented, well represented in this. So, so you want to get all those people uh, to be talking to each other, and it, we've, we've had other things, for example, between Berkeley and Caltech hub, where they, they, they're getting on the line every day and, and they're saying there's a just, okay, where are we now? And so you can do this electronically very nicely now. Uh, and so uh, I think, Eric, you can take on yeah. there. So it's a great question uh, because it is, it is dispersed across the country. I mean, the first thing we did when we looked at this challenge that was put out by the secretary was to ask, you know, what is the problem we're trying to solve? And it's a big problem. It's really trying to get factors of five and energy density and batteries. And then we looked at ourselves and said, can we do this ourselves? And the answer is, of course, we'd love to have said, oh, of course, but of course that's not true. So when you look at the problem, we realized that it had to be a multi-institutional uh, plan. We couldn't do it alone. And then we reached out and started building up a team that included Berkeley. Uh, it was happened to be the secretary's uh, old haunts where he was the director. But I was firewalled, believe But me. he was firewalled, sorry. I didn't. <laughs> From uh, any but, of that. But, but, and then, you know, so we had the other labs. We had academia. So MIT is an important one because there, there are faculty at MIT who we couldn't have done this without. Uh, and then there are industry players who, of course, we're not industry. We don't manufacture. We don't, we don't make stuff. We invent stuff. We discover stuff. And so we invited in uh, places like Johnson Controls and Dow Chemical. So the fact that it's distributed is very important because it's really just filling in all the expertise to deliver on what the secretary is asking. The second thing is there is really a pledge for under one roof. We will be, these people will be coming to Argonne on a regular basis. There are over 120 people in this hub, individuals in the hub. They'll be coming here, so this will be good for the state. Uh, but they'll also be, as, as the secretary said, aggressive internet communications like daily. So, you know, no longer is the water cooler something that's just in the hall. The water cooler is now also a room where there's very sophisticated communications equipment. So we'll manage to have a very strong and vibrant uh, culture. Hey, can I have one thing? Well, a per, on a person, besides obviously the electric vehicles that I think is promising here, one of the big riddles that has to be solved, and we're perfectly situated because of our geography in the sense of rail, uh, and all the where we geographically centrally located is how do you store the energy that either solar or wind produces for later use at another time and this research is going to go into that and so for the smart grid that will be developed both for the city but also ultimately it gets built out this research is going to be fundamental to that and perfectly positioned the city of Chicago the state of Illinois for one of the most promising areas because once somebody figures that out then obviously what you do in the renewables is a game changer. And Chicago and the state of Illinois will be on the front row, in the front row seat, 
at the epicenter of where that research is going and all the potential companies that will come from that and all the type of potential investments that will come from that. Well, it <laughs> uh, it would really it would really depend on how well uh, this uh, group does their job. Uh, we're not going to we are definitely not going to renew everybody just to put everybody on notice uh, <laughs> uh, on the hubs that we now have, and so it really will depend on how well they do their job. Uh, now, if they get their five t goals, uh, five X goals in the first five years, we will renew them. <laughs> but then they can do better. Um, <laughs> I, I, I would say that uh, you have to appreciate what those numbers really mean. Uh, because what those numbers really mean, for example, in bars, is it means you can go to a Costco, a Sears, or you name it, and buy a battery that you can store a couple kilowatts, three, four kilowatts in your home. So that battery can be your local storage if you want to put it solar. It could be toggling back and forth, time of day pricing. It sips, it does energy arbitrage for you. It sips at night and, and delivers it to you in, in the expensive air conditioning times. Uh, takes a big load off the utilities. Those same batteries could help the utilities have a much more robust system. The, we look very carefully at where the price points are. And it actually turns out to be only 4x, <laughs> but I like five better. Um, <laughs> where, it, like the price point for a computer, it was roughly $1,000 when it became ubiquitous, $1,200. $5,000 too much. $2,000 getting close, OK? Cell phone technology, think of that, you know, the big ones that uh, get smart, actual smart use to use, OK? Uh, there was price points. We know the price points of batteries in vehicles. We know the price points of batteries in, um, in, in cell phones, uh, the price point of cell phones is they'll pay for it. <laughs> uh, but the uh, price point for utility, both distribution storage and grid scale storage. And those, if they achieve those goals, they get to those price points. And then kaboom, all new industries. And that's why this is so exciting, because it touches everything. No, I think uh, that means um, uh, I did a little calculation during a blackout uh, recently in my home uh, <laughs> where, uh, you know, if you have a, uh, half the number of solar uh, panels <laughs> on, on your roof, but you have a battery, okay, you can become 80% self-sufficient, blackout immune, okay? And, and, it, and if the prices are less than $10,000 to get that, I would pay for it. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, more on the research side. But with a very much an eye for research going into development. Uh, in any new technology development, think, think back to the history of, you name it, let's take automobiles. Not every company succeeds, all right? We hope they all succeed uh, in telecommunications, in computers, in electronics. Uh, there's, you know, some win, some lose. Never should the United States ever say, oh, because we had some that didn't succeed as well as others, we shouldn't be in the game. I think that's the most important thing to recognize in any of these things. When there is a new burgeoning technology where you can see be such a significant part of any country's economy. Okay, so for companies like Agent 123, we are certainly focused very much on uh, protecting the taxpayers. But on the other hand, those are investments, and this is another investment, more on the research side, where we see you have to be in this game. If you say, no, there's a chance I'm going to fail, therefore we'll let Japan, Korea, Germany, China, you name it, own this space, then we will have failed. And if every technology from, from you know, the, the web to computers to electronics to automobiles, we had the lead. We took the lead from Germany. 
we gave back the lead to elsewhere. We have to get back that lead. And this is, but this is something that I think you ask any engineer or scientist, uh, this is one of those things. It will be part of the economy, whether it's five years, 10 years, or 15 years, it will be a central part of a lot of what we do in the coming decades. Um, you you will have if we, the the develop um, one of the parts if they develop the batteries they will develop the grid distribution system will become much more robust. Uh, it will also become much more efficient. What many people don't realize, in order to get electricity out to the fringes, out to your homes, at the very ends of the grid, you overfill and and some of it spills out. Right? You can imagine it's like plumbing. You know you. You've got to get water everywhere, so you, you're willing to slosh some of it. If you had little local storage in you know, boxes maybe this big, uh, situated, you know, you still have, I don't know what color they are around here, around where I live, they're kind of light green. I don't know what they look like here, gray or some nondescript color. <laughs> gray. <laughs> gray. Uh, those things that, that are part of the transmission are invisible, really. Uh, you could have batteries like that that makes it a much more robust system. And so as, for example, the other part of this is plug-in hybrids and electric vehicles come down in price, you actually need utility batteries on the other side to, to buffer the system. But even if you didn't have electric vehicles, you would have a much more efficient grid, something much less susceptible to surges and, and blackouts. Uh, not the blackouts that Sandy caused, but the little blackouts that you have all the time and you know it becomes a more, more but so that's something you will see immediately uh, by the way all the, the technology that's going into now today's plug-in hybrids is actually finding its way back to your computer batteries because of the plug-in hybrids the computer batteries um, have now lurched forward twofold they're twofold better than they would the way they were three or four years ago okay and they're going to go twofold better again I mean, the, if you look at the newer computers that are now being sold, just this year and last year, and look at how long they can go, uh, they are much better. And it was actually driven by automobile batteries, not by the computer. Okay? So batteries will leak out into everywhere. And your cell phone, you know, I don't know if you want to talk twice as much, but <laughs> he certainly doesn't want me to talk twice as much. <laughs> but that's another example, okay? So, it, uh, you know, energy storage batteries are actually, if you think about it, they're ubiquitous in your life. Uh, Governor, uh, all this sounds really good, but uh, you're the guy that's got to come up with $30 million on the Springfield or some major big financial crisis. Do you uh, expect any difficulty finding the money? Well, when I became governor, we had a grievous recession, and we decided as a state in a bipartisan way to uh, have an Illinois Jobs Now program of uh, $31 billion of investment, and part of our investment is already contained in that. I think we need to do more capital, uh, more investment, including this investment of getting another $30 million. But it uh, has already paid dividends. You know, to this morning at the Lower Wacker, that created 3,100 jobs for people uh, over the course of a couple of years, and these are hardworking men and women, and they're ready for the next job. And so I think, as the mayor would tell you, and I'm sure Secretary Chu and everybody up here, that investing in physical infrastructure is one of the very best ways to compete in the 21st century economy. And we also have to invest in human infrastructure. We have to have great schools. And one thing we believe in a lot in Illinois is STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and math because we want the boys and girls I saw when we lit up the Christmas tree at 10 o'clock who are in grammar school, we want them to be good scientists and uh, boys and girls. We want to make sure everybody's in. And so our educational institutions all the way through uh, four-year university and beyond have to be top-notch. And we are blessed to have great schools. We want to educate our young people to go to those schools and so we have to invest in buildings for those schools. And we are doing uh, an engineering uh, technology building at UIC, $100 million investment for physics, 
and biology and chemistry all under one roof. I'm sure Secretary Chu would be interested in that. Maybe you can come to the ground or to the uh, ribbon cutting. We've already ground broke the ground, but unless we really make these investments in brain power and in physical infrastructure to help that brain power come together, uh, we won't be as competitive as we should be worldwide. And so Illinois is the heart of the heartland, and we, like Abraham Lincoln when he was president, understood 150 years ago, he signed the Merrill Act that established land-grant universities. University of Illinois, University of Michigan, who's part of our, our team here, well, those were created by Lincoln's uh, actions 150 years ago. So we have to understand that if we're going to be doing well in the next 150 years, these investments of getting $30 million from our capital account that we already uh, have the resources for, I'd like to get more because more building, I think, will lead to more jobs. So you're saying you're confident you will be able to get I am, yeah. As a matter of fact, I'll be meeting with our legislative leaders in the coming week to talk about that, how important it is that we've seen success over the last three years in investing in roads, bridges, broadband deployment, water systems, railroads, a university and school buildings, and uh, this investment as well. I think it helped us with Secretary Chu and his decision makers uh, in seeing that Illinois was committed to building this building. we got to make sure we uh, deliver. Last question. Okay. Speaking of schools, Governor, when will you sign the school closure bill? I just got that bill, so I think it arrived today. We'll have to look at it, and we're going to look at it carefully and uh, act accordingly. Uh, so, you know, we get a lot of bills. We got a bill uh, that uh, sets up the special election in the second district. Got to look at that one, but that was one we actually sponsored. So, I think that arrives today too. Another question for the mayor. Well, I've got to look at the bill. I think any bill that I don't know, I haven't read that bill, so I, I like to read everything. I think it's important to read the bills before you sign your name. You know. Can you give us an update, Governor? Yeah. Bill, first on the, on, you said working together. What about working together on uh, casinos? I, I would say Mayor and I got together last week. We were talking about the need for undocumented uh, folks to have the access to a driver's license for public safety purposes. We're uh, teamed up on that. Uh, and I also see us working together on capital. Nice. And um, I think that issue on gaming, I'm optimistic by the 9th of January that we can come up with a bill that meets all of our criteria. The mayor and I are, are very close on the issue of strong regulation and ethics and making sure the money goes to schools and infrastructure. Isn't that true? Once yeah, they yeah. Were, yeah. Two things, I, uh, if I, I can, is uh, first and foremost uh, on the issue of the casino, I said that all the resources if Chicago, after 25 years, finally did get the legislation passed, all the money would go into modernizing our schools, building new additions, building whole new schools, building uh, facilities that can handle both the science, technology, engineering, and math that are going to be essential so the kids coming out of the city of Chicago can one day go to the University of Chicago, one day be scientists at Argonne, or at an engineering facility, or whether Johnson Control, Applied Materials, or any of the other companies who are going to be partner in this type of research. You can't get from here to there without that type of investment. So I've said, unlike any other casino in the state, the city of Chicago's casino, all the resources will go into modernizing the Chicago public school systems and the facilities, building new schools, doing new additions, modernizing to handle the type of uh, education that our kids are going to need to compete and win. So the jobs of tomorrow, don't go to Japan, don't go to Korea, don't go to Brookhaven, don't go to MIT, <laughs> don't go to uh, you, you Berkeley. They stay right here because I believe we have the best workforce. And I will say this, as a, a Craig, to, uh, to your question, to the governor or all of us, whether you're president of the university, whether you're a head of a lab, whether you're a head of the Department of Education, you have to make the choices. <laughs> I mean, Department of Energy. You do have to, but listening to that, you were thinking you were in a classroom. Uh, you have to make decisions today on your resources that have the greatest promise to hit the greatest result in the sense of economic opportunity and growth. You can't do it all. So there are a lot of other places like Wacker Drive, but you have to make a decision what leads to the greatest potential for economic opportunity, job creation, and growth. Having a field like this based here 
not at MIT, not at Brookhaven, not at some other, or not down in Tennessee, but here in the city of Chicago, the state of Illinois, city of Chicago, this capacity allows us to actually produce the types of jobs and economic opportunity and bring companies and help create companies that never saw Chicago or the state of Illinois in their future. And that to There were three bills discussed. Which one did you want to ask about? The casino? The casino? Yeah, I, I believe we, uh, I, I believe that uh, we are very close. But remember, this has been 25 years uh, in, the, in the making. Uh, but that said, as it relates to what the governor noted, some of the issues on oversight and the type of issues like that, we're in a, a, alignment. And I know from our meeting, the governor agrees that 100% of the money should go into modernizing our schools, which would be the first casino that is fully dedicated not just to infrastructure investment and the job creation will come from that, but also ensuring that our kids are going to be in the facility and getting the type of fundamental education that is essential for the jobs that will be not only at Smith Electric, but all the other companies. Thank you very much. Thank you.